Hey guys, sorry that I haven't posted in a while, my girlfriend and I bought our first home and recently moved in, so it's been really busy, but I'm hoping to get back to my regular uploading schedule as soon as possible. Anyways, thought I would kick off my return with an October 2021 meta-analysis, post a new ban list, where I look through replays of the top 25 ranked players on Dueling Book, and outline which decks were played and the matches included. So this was the breakdown of the matches included among the top 25 ranked players, where each player contributed roughly 20 matches. They typically play the same deck for all of the matches they contributed but not always. So it looks like post ban list, Drytron was actually the most popular deck among the top players because clearly EVA to 1 did absolutely nothing and not sure why they even bothered with that. Then we do have Virtual World which is a deck that many speculated would be a strong candidate as one of the best decks after the most recent list. Surprisingly, Tri Brigade variants fell to 3rd this time around even though it was by far the most played deck among the top players in the last couple of months. Next we have Prank Kids, still a strong deck despite the limit on Mew Mew Mew. Another surprise addition to the top 5 is Phantom Knights, which is technically categorized as Burning Abyss Red Eyes on YGO Scope. Really strong deck and something I personally find very difficult to side against because they'll have Dragoon, Rusty, and some Fog Blades as back row so it's got a lot of coverage. Then we have Dragon Lake still up there and Mech Knights make another appearance as well among the top players which is not too surprising if you've been keeping up with my videos. Dogmatica Invoke Shadal does not see too much representation among the top players on Dueling Book nowadays despite being a really strong deck. Elich has been declining in play in the last couple of formats but looks like it made a bit of a return this time around. And then we have some other fun rogue decks like Pure Burning Abyss, Grim Maju Control, and Plunder Patrol. Then some other decks that contributed less than 4% of the matches included something like Scrap Orcus, Medolce, and Dinosaur. Now compare that to last month's meta analysis before the new ban list took into effect. As mentioned before, Trap Brigade was really dominating the pie chart, but the rest were not too different, although we didn't see any decks like Sky Striker or Salamangrade this time around. Now overall, our top 25 players won 77% of the matches, so that is an improvement from the last few months. Although keep in mind that at the start of the format, on Dueling Book, everyone's rating goes back to 100 so you can get paired with a lot of bad players, so you tend to have a higher win percentage at the start of the format. As for playstyle of the decks involved among our top players, we are shifting back into more combo decks at 55% due to Drytron and Virtual World, although I admit that Virtual World is not your traditional combo deck since it does have some control variants to it. Compare this to last month where pretty much the same value was attributed to control decks instead, primarily because Tri Brigade was played so often by our top players. I know this probably gets so repetitive at this point guys, but as usual, let's cover the top few decks in more detail. Now our top players piloting Drytrons won an impressive 77% with this deck, and I think this is slightly higher than what it used to be. Even without the numbers, I think we know Drytrons are pretty die roll reliant, winning a blistering 87% of the matches when they won the die roll, versus just 64% when they lost the die roll. The deck does struggle to go second, but going first, if you can't hand trap them, then they really are almost impossible to beat. Other traditional going second cards like Dark Ruler or Lightning Storm really won't do too much because they are going to recycle the oranges to hand at the very least on top of something like Herald on the field, so the best way is to just to prevent them from making anything. Among all players on Dueling Book, whether good or bad, this was technically the second most played deck in the last 7 days if you add up all of the Drytron variants since YGO Scope weirdly separates them into like 7 different decks. Even among all players, they won 63% of the matches with this deck which is pretty nuts. So if you want to do well on ranked, this is a great choice if you know how to pilot it. Next up we have Virtual World which won an incredible 81% of matches among our top players. This time around actually showed a balanced win percentage based on die roll, winning 84% versus 78% depending on the die roll result. I am probably not the only one thinking that this deck's power level is certainly nowhere from where it was when VFD was legal because that was just straight almost impossible to win through, but at the same time the deck has found a new identity and it is really strong. They can set up Crystal Wing on the 5th summon to prevent Nibiru and something like Invoke Kaliga to restrict the amount of attacks or effect activations and Shen Shen for that walking macro cosmos, it's pretty nuts too. Overall this was the 3rd most played deck among all players, so very popular as well. These players won 59% of the matches, so strong output too. It is a hard deck to pilot, so that might partially explain the discrepancy in win percentage compared to the top ranked players, but we are dealing with small sample sizes of course. While it was not the most played deck this month, we still cannot ignore Tri Brigade despite some indirect hits on the ban list like Barrage and Tanky. Our top players still won 3 quarters of their matches with this deck, so that is pretty crazy. This deck usually did not have too much of a discrepancy whether it won or lost the die roll, and this time around, they won 81% when they won the die roll versus 71% when they lost the die roll. So while there is a difference there, 71% even when losing the die roll is pretty impressive. If you add up Pure Tri Brigade and Tri Brigade Zodiac, then among all players, it was actually still the most played deck on Dueling Book with a really impressive 60% 
win percentage in the last 7 days. Despite the small hits on the ban list, its direct engine is still safe and as long as Imperial Order is still legal and Revolt is at 3, this deck is still going to be a force to reckon with. Next we have Prank Kids which also won an impressive 70% among our top ranked players. Typically has shown to be a die roll reliant deck, although not too bad this month, winning 75% of the matches when they won the die roll versus 65% when they lost. The limit to Meow Meow Mew is certainly going to affect the grand game but looks like it did not deter the top ranked players in running this deck for the format. Just think about the days where they didn't even have the link 1, it's great that their opening play is at least still very viable. Overall, it was the 13th most played deck on Dueling Book, so not as popular as some of the other top decks we've seen so far, and the win percentage at 58% is still pretty respectable. Lastly, we have Phantom Knights. It is a small sample size, so don't let that 87% win percentage get you carried away too much. Certainly a strong deck though, and when they won the die roll, it won a crazy 91% of the matches, while also winning an impressive 80% when they lost the die roll. As I mentioned earlier, I find this deck to be really difficult to go second against since I play a going second deck because Phantom Knights has both combo and control aspects in terms of setting up some strong monster effects, but also having some back row for support, and it's always hard to side against those type of boards and it's too bad that this deck doesn't see as much play as it did initially when Torn Scales was released. Overall, it was the 17th most played deck, so kind of understandable, it's not going to be one of the most played decks. Overall, among all players, it still did win 63%, so that's very high, so it's a deck worth giving a shot if you wanted to play something different. Alright guys, so that was it for this month's meta-analysis. Hope you found that helpful. I'll try my best to get back to my regular upload schedule as soon as I can, but I still need this format to develop a bit more before I can dive into more data-related videos anyways. That's it for me. Take care guys.